Hello everyone, and hey, welcome to Can I Beat Pokemon Shield with only Clobopus. I chose Clobopus because it's interesting and not talked about a lot. I want to do all first form Galar Pokemon that I at least know will work in a solo run. I have already eliminated Milcery and Dreepy from the list. Too weak and bad move sets. But enough of that, let's begin. I transfer in a Clobopus from Pokemon Home. I named her The Thing because it's clobbering time. She is not in nature with the Limber ability, so she can't be paralyzed. For moves, we start with Rock Smash and Leer. Our first major battle is against Hop. Lulu goes down to a one shot, Brookity went down to two feints, and Grookey goes down to two Rock Smashes, which wins us the battle. The next morning, we get our Dino Expanse and go to the wall area. We do some training before heading into town to register for the gym challenge. At the hotel, we battle Team Yell. They were all one shots with Rock Smash. The next morning, we attend the opening ceremony, and it's off the turf field. But first, we battle Hawk. Wulu was still a one shot. Rookie took three hits this time. Grookey manages to get us to 5 HP, but Grookey still went down in 5 hits. We go through Route 3 and discover our first problem. Daba, a psychic bug. So 4 times resistant to fighting, and it has confusion. It took many, many tries, but we eventually got a run where Dollar never used confusion, only struggle bug, so he went. We then enter the mine, and at the end is B. I decided to strategize before facing him. My best answer to Bede was Payback, which was back behind Professor Fentanyl's house. Okay, Solosis is first and goes down to one Payback. Gothita uses a Tickle, which lowers our attack, so Payback does not one shot. Gothita then takes almost half our health to Saibi, but we get the knockout. Antenna's Confusion takes Bob to only 1 HP, but we win. It's time for the first gym. We round up the sheep, despite having a wanderer. And we make it to Mile. Gossifer is first, it goes down 2 brick breaks. That's the easy part. Elegas took half our health in one shot. Needless to say, we go down this way. I have to be careful with Clop's level because it's a traded mod. At level 21, she will become disobedient. We head to the wild area and start checking all the berry trees. I was searching for citrus berries, but I got orange berries. Close enough. The orange baron strategy was not working. Through raid dens, we eventually found citrus berries, which resulted in this row. Gossler took two brick breaks, as usual. For Eligoss, we did two max knuckles, which increased our attack by two, but Eldegoss got us into citrus berry range. We max guard the last turn, ending our Dynamax. Outside of Dynamax, Clob survives a match relief and gets the knockout with Brick Break. We finally have our first badge. As we go to the next city, we get the bike and knock in a hop. Wooly was still in one shot, but for Corbin's Wire, we start with the bulk up while it thankfully uses Fury Attack. We managed to get two bulk ups before taking out Quartus Wire with Waterfall, which we got from the Watch Trader. Thwacky goes down to two Brick Breaks. Okay, with that over, Irrelevant Holberry and it's gym time. Nessa starts with Goldine. We went for two bulk ups. Goldine wasn't one shot, but Cloud was already in yellow health. Ericuda hits us before going down. Now we're going into Dreadnought with only 14 HP. Dreadnought then outspeeds us and takes us to 1 HP. Okay, we need the KO. Sadly, Dreadnought lives a Max Knuckle and we go down. I'll go back to the Citrus Berry strategy. And while Goldie's Water Pulse leaves us confused, we make it to Dreadnought with Green Health. Dreadnought on the second attack 
leaves us with 5 HP, but we get the knockout. With Nessa done, it's off to Galar Mine number 2, where we fight B. We go for bulk up against Solosis, but we go down to 12 HP. Payback kicks out Solosis, but we go down to Gothila. For round 2, we skip bulk up and one shot Solosis and Gothila with Payback. But Hatina survives a hit and takes us out. We level up Club before getting this attempt. We bulk up against Solosis who hit us for big damage, but we had a citrus berry. Solosis goes down. We outspeed Gothita now and get the knockout. For Hatena, we get the knockout thanks to bulk up and last is Ponyta. Ponyta's confusion hits us to 15 HP, but we get the knockout. We go through the mine and is back to Modesto, where Marnie is waiting at the hotel. She starts with Krogon. You didn't see that. We go for bulk up and one shot Krogon, though we are already in yellow health. Scraggy goes down to one hit, but Morpico takes us out. For our next attempt, we do not use Waterfall, but still end up in yellow health, because Brick Brick got a low roll. Scraggy was still a one shot, and Morpico's Thunder Shock leaves us with 3 HP, giving us the win. Now, it's on to the third gym. Kabu starts with Night Hail. We go for Boka and have our attack left negated by will o -Wisp. Waterfall is a 2 hit KO, but we are already below half HP. Arcanize next and Intimidate lowers our attack more. I try to use Dynamax to negate it. Arcanine was still a 2 hit KO despite Dynamax. Sinister just laughs. Max Geyser doesn't even do half health when we go down. For round 2, I remember the Citrus Berry. Ninetales misses its Will Wisp and we get the Bulk up. We go for a second and Ninetales uses Ember. Ninetales goes down to 1 hit. Arcanine comes out and Intimidate takes our attack down to plus 1. Arcanine's will this lands, and our waterfall only does half HP. It's risky, but we go for Boka. Arcanine activates our berry, but goes down. Thankfully, we're at high enough health that we do not get taken out, and Sinuswords goes down to two mask geysers. With three badges, we head to Hammerlock. On the way, we grind for Watts, because we found a Watt Trader selling the TR for close combat. With that, we might not need to rely on bulk up so much. We enter Hammerlock and head towards Route 6. We wipe the floor with Team Yell, this Clefable sacrifices itself, and we are now in so inside. A hot battle is before the gym. Up starts with Cramorant. We go for bulk up, King Cram will die, but it uses Pluck. We bulk up again, and the Cram uses Pluck. When we go for close combat, the cramp finally dives. We go down next turn with Gulp Missile. I level up Cloud a little and try again. This time, Cramorant only uses Fury Attack as we get our bulk up in close combat, taking out Cramorant. Slate Cobra goes down to Waterfall. Toxo goes down to close combat. Uki leaves us on 15 HP but goes down. It's gym time. We actually lost to the last trainer because Drift from Shadow Ball is like a truck. For the second attempt, we did a bulk up versus Haunter, and Drift from decided to use Stockpile, which helped us get the knockout. Time for Alistair. First is your mask. We go for a bulk up and then payback, but your mask survives and disables payback. He goes down the waterfall. EVK is next. We go for another Boka, while Mimikyu uses Home Claws. Mimikyu's Slash does only a little, and we get rid of Mimikyu's Disguise. After another Waterfall, Payback gets undisabled. Mimikyu uses Baby to All Eyes, lowering our attack stat before going down. Crystalla is next and goes down to 1 Payback. We go down to Gengar. I level up Cloud and try again. We bulk up against your Mask, who disables it that same turn. Well, I didn't want to sick up bulk up anyway. We didn't go for waterfall, which is apparently super effective. For Mimikyu, 
since the bullcup is disabled, I start attacking. After three attacks, our bullcup was already neutralized, and we were minus one attack before bullcup was back. We go for two bullcups, which brings our attack back to normal. We go for one more before taking out Miyuki. Corsola is still one shot, and it's time for Gengar. We survive G Max Terror and get the knockout with Max Darkness. Following Alistair is another Beat fight. Beat starts with Duosion. We set up Bulk Up while Duosion sets up Light Screen, but we get the knockout. However, Hatterm outspeeds and takes us to low health with Psybeam. It goes down to Payback. Gothelia takes us out. Okay, it's back to the grind. We tried to get again and again in between level grind, but our problem is speed. Also, we need Dolosion to use light screen instead of reflect. Eventually, we get this run at level 54. We had picked up the black glasses to power up payback. We skip bulk up and go straight to payback, which one shots Dolosion. Hatrim is a one shot. Gothrida is a one shot and we finally make it to Ponyta. Ponyta outspeeds and hits us with Side Beam, but goes down to Payback. With that battle over, we hit an issue. Flabbafus hits Disobedience at level 61, and we have Opal next. She uses Fairy types, so we have no super effective moves. We actually had an issue with the gym mission, because we couldn't heal in between battles, and I can't heal in battle, we lost to the second trainer. With that, I made a hard decision to put Klob through some gruesome training. I decided to send him to school. Hammerlock University provides EV training sessions. Every hour adds 4 EVs. So if you send a Pokemon for 24 hours, that's 96 EVs in a specific stat. I send off Klob to attend the session for attack EVs for 24 hours. So now we wait. A few moments later. Okay, this time we sweep the trainers and it's on to Opal. Opal starts with Weezing. We go for bulk up as Weezing attacks with Fairy Wind. Waterfall takes it to Yellow Health and we get put into Yellow Health also. Weezing goes down next turn. Tokus comes out and we go down Air Slash. Before trying to level up, I go around the wild area, checking the Watt Traders. I find a TR for Liquidation, which I use to replace Waterfall. But we still go down to Tokus. I try again at level 59. This time, I use two bulk ups against Weezing. It's risky, but Weezing goes down to one Liquidation. Tokus goes down to one liquidation. Marwau goes down to close combat, and for the first time, we reach Alkermi. Max Geyser puts Alkermi in red health, but Alkermi does the same with GMX Finale. Thankfully, we are faster, and Alkermi goes down. That wins our fifth badge. To reach the next gym, we pass through Hammerlock and into another hot battle. We set up a bulk up versus Trevenant who does little damage with Horn Leech. Trevenant goes down to Payback. Snorlax goes down to Close Combat. Heat Morph goes down to Liquidation. Rillaboom outspeeds and does damage with Drum Beating, but goes down to Close Combat. Bolton also outspeeds and hits us with Spark, but we take it out and win the battle. The 6th gym is next, and you know, I thought the Ice Gym was going to be easy for a fighting type. Look at this. Melanie's first Pokemon is Frothman, who starts with Hail while we use Boca. But then it uses Feather Dance, making our attack minus one. We take it out and Dormantan attacks. Dormantan outspeeds and uses Taunt, so no more Boca. When we take out Dormantan, Ice Cream comes out, and it's always a minimum 2 hit KO because of Ice Face. Also, by the time Ice Cube comes out, our health is so low, it takes us out. I tried with no Boca, but close combat lowering our defenses made Freeze Dry hurt a lot. So I replaced close combat with Brick Break. But Brick Break can't take our Dementan in one hit. So it hits us with Icicle Crash. 
with that, it's time to go out. At level 68, with the Muscle Band equipped, we get this run. Glossmark goes down to Brick Break with no bulk ups. Darmanitan is a one shot. Askew hits us with an icy wind first, but then hits us with a freeze dry before going down. Now it's time for Lapras. Lapras goes for Max Geyser instead of G-Max Resonance, like it's used in previous attempts. But because the Aurora Veil from G-Max Resonance is not there, Lapras is a one shot with Max Knuckle. We finally win the 6 gems. And almost immediately after is a hop battle. Hop starts with double. It uses defense curl but goes down to brick break. Next is Corviknight, who lowers our speed twice with scary face before going down to brick break. Because our speed is minus four, Snorlax outspeeds us but goes down to one hit. Rillaboom outspeeds and takes us out. After a few more failed attempts, we come back at level 73. Double still goes down to one hit. Corviknight only gets off one scary face because it decided to use Drill Pack. Because of that, we outspeed Snorlax. I bet you never thought that would be an issue. Rillaboom still outspeeds, but goes down to one hit. Last is Pinkerchip, who goes down to Brick Break. With that over, we go to Route 9, where we save the Doctor again and get the Water Bike. To enter Spikema, we have to face Marnie, but her whole team, except Hawk's Croak, were one shots. We cannot enter Spikema, but we have to catch a Magikarp to start the gym mission. All the trainers were easy sweeps and it's on to Pierce. Thankfully, unlike Melanie, Pierce was a first try sweep. Scrappy's Intimidate hurts, but having the tap advantage helps. Also, Obstagoon could have put us in a bad spot if it used Obstruct, but it used Shadowfall. It's time for the final gym. During the gym mission, we had banned to the first trainer because Pelipper's Air Slash lowered our HP enough to faint to Sligo's Dragon Pulse. It came back with the lowest high. Pelipper goes down to two paybacks. Sligo went down to Brick Break. The other two trainers were easy sweeps with liquidation and Brick Break. It's time for Raihan. Flygon wastes its turn by taking out Magikarp and we use a Boba. Giggless Fire Press does almost nothing. Flygon's Breaking Swipe drops our attack and survives our liquidation. Flygon drops our attack again and Gigalith survives the liquidation. We take off Flygon and Gigalith puts us in red health. I tried to do a desperate Dynamax but Sanicana picks us up. We come back a few levels higher. Gigalith goes down to liquidation. Sanicana comes out but Flygon starts using its Breaking Swipes. Sanicon survives the liquidation, and we are put in low health. We go down to Flygon. For our next attempt, we come back two levels higher. We take out Flygon first thing with Brick Break. One liquidation takes out Gagala, and we finally make it to Duraldon. A misclick and attack Sanaconda, but Duraldon's G-Max depletion does barely anything. Duraldon goes down next turn. With all 8 badges, we head to Winden for the semi-finals. I make sure to pick up Ice Punch while I was at the Pokemon Center. I replace Payback with Ice Punch and it's on to Winden Stadium. Our first opponent is Marnie. Life Heart starts with a Karma, so we can't use the same move twice in a row. Life Heart goes down to Brick Break. I use Bulk Up against Scrafty because of Karma, but Scrafty uses Swagger so we are confused with plus 3 attack. Scrafty goes down. Toxicroak is next, and I forget about dry skin again. Toxicroak uses Swagger, so we have plus 5 attack, and are confused again. Toxicroak goes down. Warpico goes down to Ice Punch. Last is Grimmsnarl. We hurt ourselves in confusion, and Grimmsnarl's max Starfall does sizable damage. It goes down next turn. Hop is next. Double goes down to one brick break. Corviknight takes three hits because of a full restore, and we are below half health. Snorlax and Big Kirchen are one shots. Rillaboom is last and goes down to max Sailstorm. We won the semifinals 
it's time to go search for Leon. We get the key to Rose Tower and make our way to the top, and we have to battle Oleon. Before battling, I replace Bulk Up with Payback. Frost Loss is out first. We dodge a Will-O-Wisp and take out Frost Loss. Serena does sizable damage with Acrobatics, but it goes down to Ice Punch. My Lloyd goes down to two Brick Breaks. Salazar goes down to Liquidation, and out comes Scarbador. Does Poison resist fighting? Why? Well, it doesn't matter, because Garbodor goes down next turn because of our attack boost and Garbodor's defense drop for weak balls. We find Leon and Rose, and the finals can begin tomorrow. However, our first match is interrupted by B. The feed starts with Mawal, and our attack is down. Mawal survives a brick break and hits hard with Playwell. B uses a four store, so two more hits take out Mawal. Gardevoir is up next and we go down to Psychic. We try again a few levels higher. Mama is still a 3 shot, but it missed Playroll, so we are at full health going into Gardevoir. Instead of Psychic, Gardevoir uses Wish, and Payback takes Gardevoir to a sliver. He uses Psychic next turn for a huge chunk of health, but goes down. We go down to Rapidash. For our third attempt, I had an idea. I replaced Muscle Band with White Herb. White Herb negates Mawal's Intimidate, letting us get the one shot with Brick Break. Gardevoir is a one shot, and so is Rapid Edge. Hatterene is taken to half health with Max Darkness, but takes us to 28 HP with Max Mindstorm. It goes down next turn. It's on to Nessa. Galisapod is first. I decided to use Ice Punch. But apparently, water resists ice. Brick Break takes Galisapod to red health, activating emergency exit. Pelipper is next. Its air slash takes us to yellow health, that goes down to two ice punches. Galisapod is back and takes us to 5 HP before going down. Bear Scooter takes us out. I replace Brick Break and Payback with Close Combat and Bulk Up and try again. We use Bulk Up while Galispot uses Sword Dance, but Close Combat activates Emergency Exit. Pelipper is next. One Ice Punch takes it out. Galispot is back, and Nessa uses a Four Store, so Liquidation only takes it to Yellow Health, activating Emergency Exit again. Bear Scoot is out, it goes down to Close Combat. Galispot is out, again! It goes down to Liquidation. CK goes down to close combat and last is Dreadnought. One Max Knuckle gives us the win. Alistair is next and... I forgot to relearn Payback. But hey, I got through Dust Noir and Chandelure before going down to Poltergeist. I replaced Bulk Up with Payback. Dust Noir goes to low health with Payback, but it gets disabled. Ice Punch takes out Dust Noir. Chandelure is next and burns us. The liquidation only takes Chandelure to Red Health. Shadow Ball hits hard, but Chandelure goes down. Next is Poltergeist. Poltergeist doesn't attack and gets taken out by Payback. Crystal is next and takes it out with Hex. I replace Close Combat with Bulk Up. We use two Bulk Ups since Dust Noir can't hit us hard. One Payback takes it out. We dodge Chandelure's Glow West and take it out with Liquidation. Both the guys and Crystal are both one shots, and it's on to Gengar. One Max Darkness takes it out, and it's time for Rhyhorn. Rhyhorn starts with Twilfoil. It goes down to two liquidations, but it used Yawn on us. Turnator is next, and it apparently only knows Shell Trap, because that's all it used while we were sleeping. We go for two bulk ups, and wait for the sun to fade, before taking out Turnator with Ice Punch. Gudra and Flygon both go down to Ice Punch. Drawdown is last, it goes down to Max Melton. Our match with Leon gets interrupted by Rose, and Hop and I get the Rusted Storm Shield from the Slumbering Worlds. It's time to battle Rose. Escavalier is first. We go for a bulk up while Escavalier uses Sword Dance, but it doesn't matter because Rose is a tiny team with one shot for Brick Break, slash Max Knuckle against Kaparaja. For Eternatus, we get hit by Flamethrower, but Ice Punch does big damage 
and we get the freeze. One more Ice Punch takes it out. For a turn max Eternatus, we just kept with Ice Punch since it was the most effective until it finally went down. It's time for a battle with Leon. We go for Payback, which takes Aegislash to yellow health, but Flash Cannon takes us to half health. One more Payback takes out Aegislash, and we go down to Mr. Rhyme Psychic. We try again at level 95 for bulk up, but it's RNG if we can get the bulk up without taking damage. And when we do, Aegislash's shield form is still a 2 hit KO. Aegislash's sword form, however, is a 1 hit KO with Payback. But Aegislash is not the worst part. At level 95, we're getting outsped by Mr. Ryan, who always uses Psychic. Suddenly, I have an idea. The Quick Claw. The only problem is that it's locked behind the bargain shop in Stoneside. So in order to get the Quick Claw, I look online and find a glitch where you can use Raid Dens and changing the System Clock to manipulate the bargain shop. I was about two weeks in the future when the Quick Claw finally appeared. We try Leon again. It's still RNG if the Quick Claw will activate when I need it. But we get this run where we take out Mr. Ryan, Tax just comes out. Outrage does big damage, but Ice Punch takes it out. Next is Drag Pulp, and the Quick Claw pops, so we take it out with Ice Punch. Italian is next, and we go down. Odds are Charizard is also faster than us. We try a few more times, but nothing was working out. So, with my mind filled with frustration, I fly to Wedgehurst. Not to see Mom, but to go to the train station. We need a journey of rediscovery, and the Isle of Armor was the perfect place. This is Shield, so Avery is our rival for the Isle of Armor. Avery's Abra in the first battle was a little tough, but we took it out. Slowpoke was easy, since we outsped. So my idea is that in order to win, I need to reconfigure Clubfuss's EVs. And there is no other place to do so than the Isle of Armor. Now, I could just visit Lady Clear and do the KO method for my EVs, but I'm already 18 hours into this challenge. I need the vitamin vending machine we can get from Honey, but we can only give Honey Watts after passing Mustard's three trials. The Slowpokes were easy, Getting the mushrooms took a second try, but the third challenge was where the real challenge began. We had to battle Avery, who had cheated and set up Psychic Terrain. He starts with Ponyta, who outspeeds and hits us with Confusion. Fusion doesn't take us out, so we take off Ponyta. Then Kadabra comes out and knocks us out with Psybeam. I tried multiple strategies like Dynamaxing early, but Avery uses 4 Pokemon. So in order to be in Dynamax for Slowbro, I have to get through Ponyta unhurt and for some reason Quick Claw refuses to activate. We try a few more times until it hits me. Maybe I could try Bright Powder. So I fly to Balanlea to get the Bright Powder from the Glue Tangle and try to Avery fight again. It takes a few tries but I have developed a strategy. Whenever I finally get a run where Ponyton misses, I take it out with Payback. Then I'll Dynamax vs Kadabra to tank the Psybeam. We then use Max Knuckle to KO and get an attack rise. When we got the Swoobat due to sheer luck, Air Cutter misses and it goes down to Max Darkness. Last is Slowbro, who instead of Max Mindstorm, uses Max Geyser, allowing us to get the KO with Max Darkness. When not over, we can now give Honey our watts. To get the vitamins we need, we need 400,000 watts. I obtained the watts from using Digging Paw by the cave where we found the mushrooms. He will dig watts for 7 Armorite ore, which can be grinded in raid dens. If you're lucky, you'll get an energy boost, and you can end up with 100,000 plus watts from one session. With all the watts paid, we get 25 proteins for attack EVs and 25 carbos for speed EVs. But first, we visit Lady Clear, who is on this little island and have Club's EVs reset. I figure max attack and max speed are our best bets. 
I re-equipped the Quick Claw and tried Leon again. In our first attempt with our new stats, I forget to read on Ice Punch. Restart. We still go for a bulk up first turn, just to be safe, but it seems the damage roll to take out Shield Form Edge Slash is right on the edge, because there were attempts where we KO'd and somewhere it still had its liver. Mr. Ryan, thankfully, he always outspeed. We are not outspeeding Hexorus, Dragpult, or Inteleon, so it all depends on damage rolls and the quick form. We eventually get this run. We got our bulk up during King Shield, but Cloudfist does not Oko, so we get hit by a Flash Cannon before taking out Edge Slash. It's the round goes down to Payback. Hexorus takes us to 55 HP before going down Ice Punch. We get a quick claw activation against Dragpult, so we take it out and go for a Desperation Dynamax against Italian, who takes us to 7 HP with Snipe Shot before going down. Last is Charizard. And, and we get the quick claw activation, taking out Charizard with Max Guide. Finally, after 22 plus hours, we beat Pokemon Shield with all a call plus. Thank you to everyone who watched this video. And if you like this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and maybe leave a comment.